Texas. How y'all doing? Cool. I'm from here. I lived in Houston for seven years. It's nice. It's weird being from Houston, though, because whenever I go anywhere else, people are always like, oh my God, Houston? I love Austin. Like, that's not, that's not what I said. That's not. People love Austin. Here's why people love Austin. Because it's a city that is trying to overcompensate for the rest of the South. That's all it is. It's a leaf of kale and a trough full of barbecue sauce. Because it's, it's like young and liberal, but it's still very Southern. So you get this weird crossover. It's like Silicon Valley meets King of the Hill, you know? You meet people who are like, yeah, I own three shotguns and a rifle. In case the government ever tries to take away my Bitcoins. Like that kind of... And it peels off in a Prius with a rainbow Confederate flag bumper sticker. Like, was that guy wearing a Trump yarmulke? That was... A yarmulke? Thank you. Good luck to the subtitle guy with that one, huh? Do you leave in the R? I don't know. It's good to be here. I'm a, I'm a comedian that, uh, I don't look like a comedian. I look more like the boyfriend in a herpes commercial, if anything. Like, a comedian, you wanna see a sympathetic character. You wanna see someone who looks like they've been through things. I don't look like a person who has struggled, I don't. If you saw me in gay porn, your first thought would be, I bet his dad got him that job. Yeah. It's like a legacy hire. And I get it. It's always more exciting to hear the underdog succeed. That's a better narrative. Like Notorious B.I.G., one of his most famous songs started with, this is to every teacher who said I would never amount to nothing. And I would like to think maybe it was an English teacher trying to show him why to avoid double negatives. And that just, whoop, just went right over his fat head, but I, I can't do that. I can't, it would just sound very petty if I tried to do that. Like, and this is to my college advisor, Miss Little, who said, well, Duke is a long shot, but you should still apply. It's not. I, uh, I'm in a relationship. I have a girlfriend. Coincidentally, she looks like the girlfriend in a herpes commercial. What are the odds? One in four, those are the odds. This quadrant didn't laugh as much, and I think I know why. Let's go, we live together. We live together in Brooklyn. People complain about high rent in New York City. I like it. I think it's nice. I think it's great because nothing makes you more conflict averse as a couple than when both of you know that neither of you could afford that place alone. Like that solves most of our battles. If she came home tonight and was like, Matthew, I cheated on you. I'd be like, hey, Let's talk about it, you know, like, what's up? <laughs> I'm here to listen. My only question is what's his name and how soon can he move in? That's what I wanna know. <laughs> I'm socially monogamous, but fiscally polyamorous, you know? So I am. She's great. She could do better. She has like a, she has a good job. It's a great career. She, uh, she does sales for a tech company and I do comedy, so there's tension between the lifestyles. You can imagine how frustrating it would be knowing your partner's out until 1 a.m. entertaining drunk assholes while you're at a comedy show telling jokes to <laughs> polite strangers. You know, we buy heads like that. And we do fight a little bit. Not too hard or too often, but it's always the same. All of our fights revolve around her wanting me to understand things without having to say what they are. And I think women do this too much. And if you disagree with me, I want to remind you that there is a song by the Spice Girls where the entire time it's just someone asking a woman what she wants and she never answers. It's the whole song. There's like, tell me what you want. What, what, what do you really, really want? I'll tell you what I want. What I really, really want. Okay. So just tell me what you really, really want. I'll tell you what I really, really want. I want to... I wanna, <laughs> what I really, really, really want is zaga zaga za. <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> now you know how I feel. Oh my God. Doing great, we just hit a, a pretty big milestone in our relationship. We just got an IUD, which should be very exciting. Thank you. 
Any IUDs in the crowd? A couple? Not as many over here? No? I'll come around with a metal detector. We're going to find the holdouts. We'll find them all. I didn't know what they were. I didn't know what they were or how they worked or anything, and I assume the women in the room are already familiar, but I'm a man, so I'm going to explain it with more confidence and less accuracy. So what it is, it's, it's this little, this little T-shaped rod wrapped in copper coils, and it goes up into the uterus. I don't know how exactly. I think it's like one of those ship in a bottle type mysteries. Like, how do they get that in there? How does that fit in there? We'll never know. And it's been nice, because I'm 31, my girlfriend turns 29 on whatever her birthday is. And um, <laughs> before she was on the pill for many years, that's not a great option. You have to take it every day, and it alters your hormones and makes your body think that it's already pregnant. So even if an egg gets fertilized, the uterus is just like, seats taken, right? And just, <laughs> just keeps going. But IUD, way simpler, because it just goes up there, and then you can just leave it there for it to... <laughs> Is that where it is? No? I know nothing. Cool. Awesome. Yay. I'm like a, I'm like a Georgia governor. <laughs> uh, I don't know where it is, and I don't want to know. That's, that's between you and God. Eh. No. It goes up there, wherever there is, and then you can just leave it there for like 10 years before it turns into a diamond. And I was asking, I asked my girlfriend about it. I was like, so what kind of chemicals does it release? She goes, no, 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 there's no chemicals. Mine is just copper wire. And I was like, well, how... How did your gynecologist slash electrician explain <laughs> this steampunk cervix, right? What is it? Is it magic? Is it a horcrux? How does that work? What's going on? Are there side effects? She goes, no, because it's non-hormonal, I experienced fewer. Like, all I had with mine was for the few days after they put it in, there was, like, a, like a rusty discharge and some mild discomfort, and that was it. And I was like, that's crazy. Rusty discharge. <laughs> is my porn name. That's my <laughs> porn name. <laughs> From that job my dad got me. <laughs> Here to me is my favorite part about, uh, about copper IUDs. This is something a doctor told me. There's not a consensus in the medical community as to why they work. They just know <laughs> that they do. Which is exciting to me, because it means I get to throw out my own theories. Like, I like to think it's up there like a little Olympic gymnast holding the iron cross, just like, Focus on your career! 